Hey guys, welcome back to the Motion Raceworks YouTube channel. Today we're doing another Tech Tip Tuesday. Today we're talking about boost reference fuel regulators. Hey guys, before today's video starts, I would love to give a quick shout out to our newest division, Fluid Works. It is going to handle all of our oil, fuel, and water flow components that we are starting to manufacture and engineer and design in-house. Uh, everything from fuel filters to regulators to specialty fittings to oil pumps and to oil drives and fuel pump drives and everything else in between. They're all on our website. We have a lot of cool new designs that are going to save you fittings, make building your car easier, cleaner, and better. And uh, we're really excited to make these right here in DeWitt, Iowa. Now, if you're new to fuel systems, EFI, boosted, all that type of stuff, uh, this video is going to explain a little bit about how they work, why they're important, um, how to plumb them, and uh, everything else in between. If this is your first boosted build, uh, or you just simply don't know what that port is on top of your fuel pressure regulator, this video is for you. So in the past, if you had a fuel pressure regulator, um, you would basically start running the vehicle. You would turn your set screw uh, on your regulator, which compresses a spring and diaphragm, which increases or decreases pressure to your desired limit. Uh, typically from there, it's static, meaning it doesn't change, and uh, you run your fuel system. But with today's technology and EFI and boosted applications, boost reference regulators have become more and more common and actually very important to the system. Now, before I dive any deeper, I kind of want to explain just how a fuel pressure regulator works. If we're looking at our fluid works uh, regulators, uh, ours are actually built a little different. We have a number of different fitting layouts, but they're very similar to anything else on the market. And that principle that they have is there's a split right here and there's a diaphragm. So the fuel comes in and it goes around. Above it is the diaphragm and in the diaphragm is typically contained a needle and seat or a ball or some type of check valve that goes towards a seat. Uh, think about when you are using a water hose, you can start putting your finger over it and as you do, it starts to spray a lot more pressure and to a certain point, it'll flow the same amount of water, but it will start to increase the pressure because you're limiting the size of the orifice that it's going through. Same principle here. So as you adjust the screw here, it pushes that diaphragm and ball and C or needle and C or whatever style uh, fuel regulator later it is into this bottom um, section. And from there, it goes around that needle and seat or ball and seat or whatever it is out that fitting. So basically, the fluid coming in is unregulated. Going out is basically where you're controlling things. So, so with a static system, like I said before, you can adjust it and set it. For a boost regulated system, you're wanting to alter that. And what, what I mean by altering that is as cylinder pressure goes up, as manifold pressure goes up, your injectors have to start working against the internal intake manifold pressure uh, to flow the same given amount of fuel. And how do we do that is with a boost reference regulator. So the manifold is going to feed pressure to the top of that diaphragm, which is gonna take your base pressure, which you set with the screw, and it's going to increase it. Uh, typically one to one is very desirable in this. So if you're adding a pound of boost to your manifold, you wanna add a pound of boost to your fuel pressure so you can overcome that force. What that does is it allows you to tune more effectively. If your fuel is not able to flow correctly, you're really gonna be chasing your tail trying to fuel a motor that's now making more power, but has less fuel pressure, is actually has pressure working against it. So it becomes kind of a backwards thing if you don't have a boost reference regulator. You're typically hooking up a line from the plenum of your intake manifold right to your fuel pressure regulator. Now we don't suggest sharing that line with anything else in the system especially wastegates and blow-off valves and other things that vary and oscillate. Uh, you want this to be a very steady source of what's actually happening in the manifold. So let's take, for instance, your typical LS turbo combination. Let's say we start with 43 and a half PSI of base pressure. Um, when we want to put 30 pounds of boost in it, we're going to actually set this while the car is running. You might run it up to 2,500 RPM just for common demand of fuel. And uh, you'll set this to 43 and a half. From there, you're going to plumb your line from the manifold into here. So for 30 pounds of boost, as long as you have everything else correct in your fuel system, the goal is to make 30 more pounds of fuel pressure at that 30 pounds of boost. Ideally, this should be a very linear thing. So if in the best case scenario, 43.5 plus 30 equals 73.5. So when you get to 30 pounds of boost, you really want it to be 73 and a half PSI of fuel pressure. 
Now, of course, this is all theory. Like I said, fuel pump, how your plumbing is, your return line, it can either go higher than one-to-one -one or lower to one-to-one. -one. But typically, as far as tuning goes and uh, consistency, we all, most tuners will try to shoot for a one-to-one -one on that ratio. Now, believe it or not, whether it's a boosted application or not, the regulator isn't actually physically going to change internally. Um, the outside's the same. Now, there's a couple things you can do. So let's say you have a standard, naturally aspirated vehicle. Some folks will prefer to hook this up to the manifold still uh, because it's a vacuum reference and all of that. Other people will try to put a uh, small line that kind of goes into a clean area so it can't pick up dust and debris, so it can just reference atmosphere. I've seen it done both ways. But whether or not you're running a boosted application or not, you're going to run the same regulator. When you go to hook up the boost, you hook up the manifold here, and then if you're running naturally aspirated, you can leave it open to atmosphere. I would suggest putting some type of filter on it, or you can hook it to the manifold if you so choose. So here is a pretty good visual. This uh, diaphragm seals right here in the top lid of your fuel regulator, and then Everything on the top is basically pressurized and has a spring and that set screw. Everything on the bottom is gonna be fuel related. So they are a divided system, air on top, fuel on bottom. Now, if you're looking for a new fuel pressure regulator, obviously we love the fluid work stuff. Uh, we have several different variations that have different inlet styles. We have this dual inlet in the front, we have a traditional 180 degree where it has a fitting on each side. We have a 90 degree one. This one is made to really allow you to mount it right off the end of a fuel rail. Uh, this one's kind of a trick piece that uh, we're really proud of. All three of these have the same internals. Now, if you're not running a fluid works regulator, one thing that often gets disregarded I wanna talk about is compatibility with fuel. Uh, as you can imagine, if these two divided areas uh, cross over, you can start to have a lot of tuning issues. And I saw this recently with a friend's car. Um, if that diaphragm is torn, compromised, or let's just say that it's not compatible with the fuel and it's degraded, uh, maybe methanol or some type of ethanol has degraded it, you have a potential to backfeed all of that fuel right into your intake through this vacuum port. So it's a good idea to probably just check that. A good way to do that is you can just pull this line off, run the car and just see if it is leaking out of it. Um, nothing really needs done beyond that. From my experience, this is not typically a service item and uh, cracking it open can sometimes if you don't know what you're doing, cause more issues than good. But this is definitely something to keep an eye out for, especially if you're not familiar with the material it's made out of and it's compatible with the fuel you're running. And hopefully that gives you a little bit more uh, clear understanding of how it works and why you need it and how you hook it up. Now, a lot of people ask what size for this reference. Um, typically, I like to use quarter inch push to connect on that. I find that it flows plenty for any application across the board. That push to connect line, just make sure you know how to cut it properly, is a great option because it can handle the pressure, uh, typically has no intent of blowing off, and they typically seal up very well. Uh, I have seen rubber line used. I've used it in the past myself. A couple things to keep in mind when you're using rubber line on that. It needs to be clamped on both ends. If that line comes off during the middle of a pass, say you're making 30 pounds of boost, you're probably going to be looking for a new short block and or cylinder heads as well. When it loses fuel pressure because it lost the boost reference at that type of power levels, it's typically catastrophic. The other concern on rubber line is it can balloon or rupture. Uh, so if you were to use that style line, make sure you use something that's rated for that type of pressure and or use. Also consider the fact that there's going to be potentially chemicals making it in there. Uh, if you have reversion in your intake, fuels can dry out that line or contaminate it or break it down. You know, if you're using some like windshield washer line, it's not safe, I don't think. And then you also have to consider the heat in your engine bay. If it's uh, some really chintzy line and that starts to melt, you're gonna have a bad day, just like you would if a wastegate line melted as well. So I wanna give a shameless plug to our new EFI regulators. These things are small and compact, but flow a tremendous amount. I've tested this exact regulator on systems that are three and a half gallon, five gallon, 12, up to 12 gallon so far. Um, and they flow great. Fitting layouts are superb. Uh, they make your engine bay look so much nicer and it's a lot easier to route lines. They are methanol compatible. Like I said, they're very small, but they're very capable as far as flow goes. They also have this nice billet mount, uh, which is actually able to be used on three sides on this particular one, two on some of the others. 
uh, depending on the fitting layout. And then we have pressure sensor ports on both sides. It's just a nice option. We try to think of all the things that cause us problems and we have to adapt when we're building fuel systems. And the best part of all is a manifold reference port. The boost reference port is 8 inch NPT. It's not hard fitting to find. We wanted something that was common that you could screw right in what you have and make it work. One last thing I wanted to cover, I feel like there's a lot of confusion on this, is your pressure ranges. Your pressure is most times uh, regulated by what your fuel pump is able to flow and create. Uh, boost reference regulator, for instance, this one, um, we rate 35 to 75 PSI spring. And that is basically just your base pressure. So on most systems, when you set your set screw on the top, you can run it up to 75. It really has, that number has nothing to do with your end uh, pressure ability. So if you have 50 pounds of boost, you're gonna be able to go from 75 to 50, so 125. Whether you, if you have 100, you're gonna go to 175 if you start at 75. So you have the ability to set that base pressure higher than normal, um, but that never dictates your end pressure as far as a limit. We could go on about fuel pressure and fuel systems for days. Those will be safe for another Tech Tip Tuesday. We try to keep these short and sweet. If you have ideas for the next Tech Tip Tuesday, please drop them in the comments below. We do watch them. It's how we get a lot of ideas and inspiration for some of the next Tech Tips, as well as keep an eye on what we need to cover next. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully it was informative. We'll see you next time.